My name is Jess, and today I'm going to share with you how to make Casey, a roomy duffel bag pattern. I designed this pattern so it is simple to make, yet features luxury elements for a high-end look. There's plenty of room inside to fit everything you need for a weekend getaway. This medium-sized bag is equipped with convenient exterior slip pockets, high-end details, wide opening zipper closure, comfortable handles, and an adjustable strap. The name and design of this pattern was inspired by the classic TV series Ben Casey and two of my best friends who love to travel. The bag is accented with faux leather or cork fabric on your home sewing machine. The instructions include tips for reducing bulk and a unique construction method that will finish off your bag just right with a snug fit lining for a professional look. Everyone is always shocked with the final results of this pattern and by how simple it is to construct. Be sure to purchase the pattern before taking this class. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local fabric shop. Please remember to shop local whenever you can. I will be your instructor for this class and step by step I'll show you how to attach your interfacing and stabilizer, attach exterior slip pockets, construct luxury looking handles, Add an interior slip pocket, add a double slide top zipper closure, the final assembly, attach unique side connectors which will add shape to your bag, and create an adjustable strap. This entire project has been designed as beginner friendly as possible and don't worry, I will be here to guide you through the entire process. So I'm sure you're eager to make one of your own, so let's start by gathering our materials and supplies. Please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. Review the cutting layout found in the pattern, then cut out all of your pieces according to the pattern. Also, it may be helpful to label your pattern pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. If using laminated cotton or wax canvas, skip to the next section of instructions. For all other fabrics, Center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of each coordinating main fabric piece, including pieces A for your exterior panels, B for your exterior slip pockets, and C for the connectors. I'm using a wool pressing mat and a Liso travel iron. I love this set because it's convenient to keep handy next to my sewing machine. Center piece K, which is your heavy stabilizer, on the wrong side of piece J, which is your contrast base piece. Use basting spray or basting tape to hold in place. Also, note that piece K is cut smaller than piece J, so it doesn't get caught in the seam in a later step. The firmness of the stabilizer will help prevent the bottom of your bag from sagging over time. Top stitch piece K in place a half inch from the raw edge. Take both foam piece A for your exterior panels and mark away from each top corner along the sides and top edge according to your pattern. Then draw a diagonal line between the two adjacent corner marks. Then cut along the diagonal line to angle each top corner. Next, center one of your foam pieces on the wrong side of each main fabric piece A. You can use basting spray or sewing clips to hold the layers together to prepare for sewing. Baste a quarter inch from the top, sides, and bottom edge. Do not top stitch the angled edges. A walking foot or Teflon foot may help prevent your fabric from shifting while sewing, and it'll also help for those slicker fabrics such as laminated cotton or wax canvas. After sewing, trim the excess foam away from the seam allowance, being careful to not cut through the stitches. Center piece M on the wrong side of piece J covering the heavy stabilizer. You can use spray or clips to hold it in place. Top stitch a quarter inch from all the edges of the foam, then you'll trim the excess foam from the seam allowance just like before. With wrong sides together, fold each piece B, which is your exterior slip pocket, in half so it measures according to your pattern. Top stitch a quarter inch from the top folded edge. 
with right sides up, center one piece B along the bottom edge of each piece A. Sew a quarter inch from the sides and bottom edge of each piece B. Start by marking the center length of each piece F if desired. Then with wrong sides together, you're going to fold each length side of piece F to the center. You can use basting tape along the center or sewing clips to help hold the folds in place. Then top stitch according to the pattern from each folded edge of each piece F along the entire length. Measure in from each short end of both piece F according to the pattern. Top stitch between but not past both marks an eighth inch from each folded edge. Next, fold each handle in half to find the center. Then, mark according to the pattern away from each side of the center. Next, with wrong sides together, which is your raw edges sandwiched in the middle, fold each piece F in half lengthwise. If your machine allows and you're comfortable, Start by top stitching across the strap at the marks for reinforcement. Then top stitch an eighth inch from the edge in between the marks along your previous top stitching. Remember to repeat this for both straps. Apply basting tape to the wrong side of each handle up to your previous top stitching. Then with right sides up, position one handle over each exterior panel aligning the bottom raw edges and positioning the outer edges of each handle in according to the pattern. Then you'll top stitch an eighth inch from each folded edge of the handle and stop at your marking, stitch across the strap, and then sew down the opposite side. If desired, top stitch an X inside a box just below your marking for reinforcement. With wrong sides together, fold each long edge of piece C to the center. Then top stitch 3 8 inch from each long edge. Subcut piece C into four equal pieces, which will be your connectors. You can set two of the connectors aside. Slide one D-ring over the end of each connector so the flat side of the hardware is against the wrong side. And with wrong sides together, fold the raw ends of just two connectors so they meet in the middle. So one end will encase the D-ring. Pin in place. Then with right sides up, position one connector according to the pattern on each exterior main panel. Use a zipper foot to top stitch each connector starting along the hardware, then pivot and sew an eighth inch along the remaining edges, creating a box. If desired, you can top stitch an X inside the box just sewn. Next, with wrong sides together, fold the remaining two connectors in half matching the raw ends. Use a zipper foot to top stitch each connector along the hardware, then pivot to sew an eighth inch along the remaining edges, creating a box. With right sides together, center one connector on each short side of piece J, aligning the raw edges with the hardware towards the inside. Baste each raw end in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. With right sides together, fold each piece E, your interior slip pocket, in half so it measures according to the pattern. Sew the sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, turn each piece E right sides out. You can use a stiletto or our Sally Tomato Essential Turning Tool to help poke out the corners and smooth out the sides. Then you can press in place either with your iron or try using a seam roller. Also, note that the bottom edges will be raw. Top stitch an eighth inch from the top folded edge. With right sides together, center one piece E on each piece D, 
with the bottom raw edge of piece E down from the top edge according to the pattern. The top edge of piece E should be towards the bottom. Sew the bottom edge of piece E in place with a quarter inch from the raw edge. Then you'll fold each slip pocket up and press. Top stitch the sides and bottom edge with an eighth inch seam allowance, making sure to back stitch for reinforcement. Take one piece D and mark according to the pattern in from each side along the bottom. Draw a diagonal line between each mark in the nearest top corner. Then cut along the diagonal lines to add shape to the lining. You repeat for the opposite side. This will make the lining just a little bit smaller so it'll fit nicely inside our finished project. I highly recommend top stitching across each raw end of the zipper tape to help prevent your pull from coming off in a later step. You can do this if you're using Sally Tomato Nylon Coil Zippers by the Yard or any nylon coil zipper. If you're using metal teeth, you'll want to have the exact size zipper needed for the pattern. On both top corners of each piece A and D, measure according to the pattern to create a box. Then cut along the marked lines. Next, with right sides together, center the zipper along the top edge of one piece A. Pin the zipper in place. After pinning, make sure that the handle is down out of the way. With right sides together, layer one piece D over piece A and the zipper. Align all edges and clip together along the top edge. Sew together along the top with a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold piece A and D away from the zipper and press. Then with right sides together, center the zipper along the top edge of remaining piece A. Pin in place. Layer the remaining piece D right sides down. Sew together along the top with a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold piece A and piece D away from the zipper and press. Then with right sides up, align one long edge of piece G along the seam of the zipper. Use basting tape or fabric glue to hold in place. Top stitch an eighth inch from each long raw edge of both piece G. You can adjust if needed as you sew. Then after sewing, move both zipper pulls to the middle. Fold the bag so both piece A are right sides together and both piece D are right sides together. Align all the edges and clip or pin in place. Sew both piece A together along the sides with a half inch seam allowance. Then sew both piece D together along the sides with a half inch seam allowance. After sewing, trim the lining seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Next, mark the bottom center of each piece A and piece D by folding each in half and matching the seams. Also, mark the front, back, and side centers of piece I and J by transferring them from the pattern pieces. With right sides together, match the center marks and raw edges of the assembled piece A with piece J. Start by matching the center marks, then you can align the straight edges, and lastly, ease in the corners. It's easiest to sew this step with piece J against the bed of the sewing machine. Sew around piece J with 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
If needed, you can snip the curbs with your scissors without cutting past the 3 8 inch seam allowance to help relax the fabric. Next, with right sides together, match the center marks and raw edges of piece D with piece I. Remember to first match the center marks, then the straight edges, then ease in the corners. Sew around piece I with a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure to leave eight inches unsewn for turning. I like to mark my opening with two pins and that'll help remind me to start and stop at those double pin marks. So that way I don't forget to leave a section unsewn for turning. Now we're ready to turn our bag right side out. Push your bag through the unsewn section of the lining. If you didn't stitch over the zipper pulls, your zipper might come off. So set that aside like mine did, and I'll show you how to put it back on in the next step. So after your bag is turned completely right side out, fold the raw edges of the unsewn section to the wrong side and make sure that the folds are even. Hand sew or top stitch the turning hole closed with an eighth inch seam allowance. After that's top stitched, you can push the lining down into the exterior. If one or both of your zipper pulls came off because you didn't stitch over the ends, that's okay, we can easily put them back on. First, start by taking your zipper pull and notice that there's a round end with two openings and a flat end with only one opening. We're gonna use the round end with two openings since you'll notice we have two sides of our zipper chain. So you're simply going to feed the coil into each hole on the zipper pull. Since this is a tight area that we're working with, just take your time and it might take a few tries to get the pull on at first. And just gently guide it in. Once you have it aligned, then you can simply pull it on or push it on with your thumb. You might have to wiggle it a little bit since it's a tight area. You can also view our YouTube video on how to put a zipper pull on a raw end for further tips and instruction. Apply basting tape or glue to the wrong side of each piece L along the raw outer edges. Slide one swivel hook onto each piece L so it's in the center. Next, you'll make sure that your zipper is closed. Pull both exterior pieces away from each other, matching the zipper on top with the side seam underneath. Make sure both lining pieces are against their respective exterior piece and use sewing clips to hold the folds in place. Then with wrong sides together, fold each piece L in half aligning all edges. Slide one piece L over the raw top corner of the bag, overlapping the corner by about a half an inch. The exterior should not extend past the edges of piece L. You can also use some sewing clips to help hold it in place. Next, top stitch along the hardware and an eighth inch from all the edges of each piece L. Remove the sewing clips after top stitching then repeat for the opposite side. Next, you'll take both piece H to create your crossbody strap. You can follow the instructions in the pattern or visit our YouTube channel for a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make a crossbody strap using cork fabric or faux leather. You can choose to use a slider buckle for the adjuster, or you could follow our tutorial for using a stud button for a professional sleek look. Thanks so much for sewing with me today. I truly hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and learned lots of tips about working with different fabrics, hardware, and zippers. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, comment with your feedback. We love to hear what you have to say and see your projects when you're done. We read every single one of your comments. They mean so much to us. Also, please share photos of your completed project using hashtag SallyTomato and hashtag CaseyDuffel. 
We'd love to see how you're using your new travel companion. Thanks for watching and we hope you'll stick around for more inspiration.